there's this very late night convening of the cabinet to assess the deal. Do we know anything about what, what is happening? Um, yeah, good night from here, uh, Chris. We know that minutes ago, the Israeli government did vote to pass the deal. Um, it was not unanimous, and Netanyahu's most extreme right ministers, including, I think, one or two from his own party, did not support it. But out of a 38-minister government, this passed comfortably. There are expected to be very limited appeals to the Supreme Court presented even tonight, right now, three, four in the morning. And those appeals would be against specific names of Palestinian prisoners who are going to be published in the coming minutes, those that will be exchanged. And family members of the victims of those people have the right to appeal specific names. Ironically, the right-wing organizations who were hoping to appeal against this whole decision and say that it was illegitimate are limited from doing it by a law that Netanyahu himself passed pre-war right. when he was trying to do a judicial overhaul. Yes, we should. This is the Times reporting on this, on, on the possible uh, Palestinian prisoners who might be included in such a deal, um, saying that negotiations around the release of Israeli women and children held hostage in Gaza have centered on exchange for Palestinian women and minors held in Israeli prisons. Many of the most recent arrests came during raids across the Israeli-occupied West Bank, where protests and violence have surged, including attacks on Palestinians by Israeli settlers. Israel has said the arrests are part of a counterterrorism operation against Hamas in the West Bank. Rights groups have long warned that Palestinian detainees are held without due process and face abuse and even torture. So these these would be these these prisoners who are part of this exchange. It sounds like will blow, mostly be women and children themselves. Is there any ad additional reporting about the pause aspect of this, about there being some cessation of hostilities for some period of time? There is, and as you said, we should underline how complicated it is. The understanding that I have here is that the initial batch of Israeli hostages to be released counts, as you said, about 50, but they're not going to be released, you know, all on Thursday. They're going to be released at uh, about the pace of 10 a day over four or five days. Hmm. And what Hamas is promising is that if Israel then extends the pause, it will search for more children in particular, search for more you know, Israel has about 240 hostages, so the release of 50 would still leave 190 Israelis or, I want to emphasize this, foreigners captured in Israel, tourists, agricultural workers, um, aid workers, you name it. These people are not being counted. Israel has explicitly said any non-Israeli citizens are not counted in exchange for the Palestinian prisoners. But these are all counted as Israeli hostages taken from mm -hmm. Israeli territory. So I think that if the deal goes ahead and it proceeds well, what we're seeing is at least five days of a truce um, that I think will include also the cessation of Israeli spy drone activities over Gaza, which leads to a lot of questions about what Hamas is planning to do during mm -hmm. that time. And, and that then Hamas plans to kind of dangle this possibility of further hostage releases over several days, ideally for it to try and change this truce into a permanent ceasefire. Let, let me just say that we, we can now, you just said this, so I'm not telling the viewers anything they don't know, but NBC News now uh, confirming and reporting uh, that the Israeli cabinet has, as Nogo was just saying, uh, passed uh, uh, the, the 38 ministers have by major majority uh, approved this deal. Again, the, the contours of the deal are not public or written down anywhere. So we're still sort of figuring this out based on reporting. But the deal has been approved. It was not unanimous. There was opposition, as Noga said, uh, some of the more far right members of that of that government and including some members of Netanyahu's uh, Likud party as well. Um, the, the prime minister's office, the Israeli government meeting has just ended. This is the prime minister's office. The decision on the outline of the hostage deal passed by a majority of votes. That's what we have. So we, we have approval, it seems. We have <clears throat> Our understanding of the basic contours of this, and particularly about this sort of attenuated release of hostages in exchange for cessation of, of hostilities as well. I guess my final question for you is, like, what, what the sort of 
political discourse around this in Israel has been been like? Obviously, I think I can imagine right now family members of the hostages in this just unbelievably intense and, you know, difficult period right now of wondering, like, is their loved one going to be one of the ones? That's right. It's I mean, the word for this is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. There have been aspects that have been disgraceful with some of Netanyahu's ministers attacking these families, screaming at them, you don't have a monopoly on pain and this sort of thing. And I have to tell you that what, again, assuming this deal goes through, as you said, assuming it proceeds smoothly, what we're talking about is the Israeli government within very few days finding itself in a squeeze organized by Hamas right. in which either it suspends military operations for longer or it has to look at you know, close to 100 Israeli families in the face and say, yeah, your loved ones are still in Gaza and we're starting to bomb right. again. All right, Noga Tornopolsky, uh, it's always fantastic to get your perspective. I really appreciate you staying up till this ungodly hour to bring us this news uh, live here. It's really appreciated. Thank you very much.